Hi guys, welcome back to Combi Life. In today's video, we've decided to do a DIY video about how to make a solar shower, rack mounted solar shower, because it is summer and a lot of you are about to go on your adventures or little trips away in your van. So we thought we'd help out with that. Yeah, this is going to be like kind of a budget shower option. It's really cool because it is rack mounted, like Leah said. So in this video, we'll show you everything you need to make this rack mounted solar shower. Really cheap. Yeah, well, cheap-ish, how much it costs and uh, how to put it all together. And we'll do a little test at the end. So let's get on with that. Some of you might be wondering who this guy is tinkering with the combi. Grant, come over here. This is Grant. Grant is actually the new owner of our combi. He's the person that's taking the reins um, and going on adventures. We shared this with our patrons um, during a live chat to find out exactly what Grant's up to. Say yep. hi, Grant. Hello. Um, we've also interviewed Grant uh, for the last episode of our Astro Alaska series, which will be coming out at the end of season five. So you can find out more about Grant and more about the adventures that he will be planning in this combi later on. But for now, let's get on with this shower. So the idea of this rack mounted shower is that it's made from parts available from your average hardware store, right? Yep, yep. Can Can say brands? Could say brands like Home Depot, but we'll just Beep. Better not say that then, yeah. Beep. Yeah, no, we've got all these parts at Home Depot. I will say, guys, that there'll be people watching this all around the world, so um, all of these parts might not be available. Like, I couldn't get all of this stuff in Mexico, and I, I actually built different versions of a rack-mounted shower out of PVC piping um, in various countries through Latin America as I was driving up, and they don't always have the same parts available, but in Canada... They have everything. They have a lot of stuff. So, a couple of things to note is Black is a good colour. Yeah, this is already boiling hot. It's really hot. That's really taking some heat. Do you know it? what kind of piping this is? Sewage? It's yeah, it's like a sewage pipe. It's quite thick. It's not. No, it's not. It's not used. It's fresh. I don't think so. Do it in white, but that's thinner and it's going to do swell. Yeah, my first shower was uh, white pipes because there weren't black ones available, and I sprayed them. Um, so it did still get hot, and it was good, but like you say, the plastic was thinner. So this nice thick. Yeah, you can um, see. It's Piping. really really dense yeah it's really good how much did all this cost under 150 dollars canadian not american yeah canadian that might seem like quite a lot of money but then you can compare it to some of the off-the-shelf solutions that are available that are made out of aluminum aluminium um, and they're like you know they can be 300 dollars and up so you can make something for about half the price and that is what we're going to try and do today first things first something to store the water in Six foot, four inch, black sewage pipe. It's made of some special plastic. ABS, that's what it is. Super thick. Yeah. This last forever. Oh yeah. Uh, next up, we need to get water into the pipe to fill it up. So, angled T-piece with an adapter that puts a screw thread into it. That means we can put a cap on the end, which is also pretty useful if we ever want to clean it. So you can unscrew this you get full access to the pipe. If you could find an end piece that would go on here, um, you know, it might be cheaper, or if you wanted to, you could drill a hole directly into the top of the pipe, but I didn't want to have to deal with epoxying it and all that kind of stuff, and this is pre-designed to do this, so we went with that. So we have a way of getting water in now, but obviously the water would leak out of this two-inch pipe, so we need to cap that. So we need another female adapter, this time two-inch, and a two-inch cap. Again, fairly straightforward, there we go. Repeat the same process at the other end. Another Y-shaped adapter, another female, and another cap. <clears throat> so now that you've got the water in the shower, how do you get it out? What you use is take this, a different type of adapter, which just has a reducer on it, and then this funky little adapter thing here, which has a screw thread in it, which fits in there. And then, by the power of magic, a metal tap will screw straight into the end. If I could do it, no, it wasn't full thumbs. But uh there you go. So now that we have our tap, we need to somehow get that water into a lovely little shower head. I'm going to, I'm going to make it detachable because I don't want to leave the hose pipe on. So we've got this pretty funky rollable hose pipe. That just screws on directly because this is a standard tap fitting. And then on the other end, take our shower head with your PTFE tape if you want to make sure that's a good seal. Et voila, shower. So first of all, we're going to Attach the female adapters to the T-pieces. 
And then to bond it, we need to use this special cement. No, no, you do it. I can't. I'm not strong enough, Grant. <laughs> Leah! <laughs> Leah! You get a woman in here. Guys, come on. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go everywhere. <laughs> what is it? Special cement. 25, 24. Here, and then... I am sweaty. Good. That's as far as it will go in, no matter how hard I bash it. So your second one, which will be on the back, will be the pipe here. So in this case, this pipe wants to go on this side. Make sense? Okay, so it's at the front part. We need to add the screw thread to the top. Now we fit the hose attachment part, this part and this part, but don't fit this part yet, and I'll explain why in a second. Now we mount the front section to the big pipe. So just to say, when you're fitting these parts, push it on as hard as you can, a little quarter turn. If that doesn't work, rubber mount it. So I said I'd come back to something, which is the fitting of the hose tap to the adapter. Now, the reason I'm doing this before I fit the plastic bit is because I want this to face downwards, uh, this direction. If I were to fit this and then do it, that might end up this direction or this direction or this direction. So I'm gonna get this fitted first and then we'll glue it into the pipe. Hats off to my dad for teaching me how PTFE tape works. If you don't know what this does, it just forms a good seal around any metal binding screw into that. Always remember to go in the direction of the thread. I think that's right. If not, my dad's gonna kick my butt. Can't turn that any further. All good, nice and tight. Starting to look like a shower. One future modification for Grant on his shower is to pressurize it. And you can do that by putting in a Schrader valve which looks like this. You'll have seen them on your tires because that's how you inflate them. Um, you can buy these valves from most auto stores and you can put one even into a PVC pipe. This one here, this uh, roof shower is a aluminium pipe, but you can also put one of these in with a decent epoxy. You just need to find somewhere with thick plastic and that's where the really thick plastic that Grant has chosen um, comes in handy. So these end caps that he has, you could totally put one of these valves in here and you can pressurize it up to about 18 or 20 PSI. But again, just be careful when you do that. When it comes to the top to put the water in, the filler lid, um, a couple of things here. You don't really get um, very good pressure coming out of the shower because the air can't escape. So what people tend to do with this type of shower is take the lid off to allow air out, which inevitably means that at some point they forget it. I've done it multiple times. I've seen other people drive off and their, and their lids fall off uh, in the road. It's, this is a serious thing. So you buy a couple of them. Um, it's not a bad thing having a spare make a way to tie it on so that when you take it off you don't accidentally leave it on your roof or what did you do grant this is quite clever just to say these are only like a, a buck 88 so they're not expensive so yeah having good. a couple of them says it's a good plan. A good idea the thing here which is all we want this is a uh, like a one-way valve which if we push in we'll make a small hole in here big enough for this it will sit in this part here and if the pressure gets too hot it'll just pop out and get a bit of air through there so if you need to, it's just a little air valve. It's the same thing you get in your large water butts and things like that. So we stole the idea from there. So you could basically now pull this out. If you want to get, like if you're having a shower and you're not getting good water flow, you can just like pop it out and then the air can escape. Yeah, if that doesn't work, I mean, we'll test it when we've got it. But if it doesn't work, I'll still be taking the cap off, but I'll probably, you know, tie something around there so I don't lose it or anything. To be honest though, because it's a black pipe, it's going to get hot, water pressure is going to increase. The whole thing's going to be pressurized. This just means it isn't going to explode on the top of the van, which we don't want. That would be fun. Yeah. And this is ingenious, ingenious. important. Okay, so for the first one, it doesn't really matter which orientation it is, but the second one does because you want that one, when you spin it around to be completely upright so that you can fill it from the top. And you want this one to be at the bottom so that all of the water in the pipe 
comes out goes without saying that you don't want it to come out on the side like that. You really want this exit spout to be at the bottom as best as you can. So that you get all the water out because that's important. And so are hats. It's really important how you attach this huge projectile missile thing that you're putting on the top of your vehicle because if it's not done properly you could kill somebody so please do it correctly. Um, Grant what are you doing to put this thing on top of the combi securely? Got two jubilee clips which are really strong basically strips of metal that will bind to each other and then underneath we have another metal beam a little u-shaped bar and then what we're going to do is where these come out of it is fold them down to lock it in securely wrap them back around again tighten these up it's really up to you whether you put your shower on the off side of your vehicle or the side with your doors to your living space. The advantage of having them on that side is the, the water is easier access. The disadvantage though is that over a long period of time in one camp you can create a bit of a dirty puddle which you inevitably end up tracking through into the living quarters. So there's pros and cons for both sides. Grant's putting it on this side because actually the gutter on this particular vehicle, the combi, is stronger on this side and the roof rack has more mounting points so it can support the weight a bit better. And that's why we're doing it this way. I've gone for a detachable shower option just because I don't want to have this hanging around, anything like that. Also means we're not going to lose water. Just tap off. Unscrew, pack away. There we go. shower with your glasses on. Always. <laughs> yeah. So the thing about these showers when they're not pressurized with a Schrader valve, um, you'll rely on gravity for the pressure and so you can see here the lower it is, <laughs> hey, the better it is. It's kind of warm already and it's hardly been in there a minute. Yeah. So the lower it is, the better the quality, the better the pressure is, the higher it gets if you wanted it at actual height, uh, shower height, the pressure does actually drop quite a bit. So something to bear in mind, if you've got a really tall like sprinter van or a high top, then you can mount uh, a PVC shower really high. But if you've got a low van, like a combi, um, you might have to have a shower crouched down like this, which to be honest, it's not that bad. Off grid water. Yeah, pretty good. Now, um, Leah, can you please get naked in there because otherwise no one's going to watch this video. No. Oh, I was getting naked. Yeah. Still no one's going to watch this video. I hope you guys are ready to go forth and get your DIY on. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and we'll create more van live content for you, like the ones grossing your screen right at this second. It probably goes without saying that you want to be subscribed so that you don't miss the next awesomeness that we submit to Cyberspace. Muchas gracias, amigos.